Okay, very good. Very good. Got it. Got it. So we'll open up and in prayer for Sunday school this Sunday morning on June the 4th, right? Yes. Okay. So, Lord, we thank and praise you for our lesson this morning. We thank you, Holy Father God, that your word is accurate and complete. You have commanded that nothing be added or taken away from your word in any way, shape, or form. As we continue to study your word this year, Father God, please bless us. Please move in our heart and on the hearts of my students that they love it, that they love your word, that they trust your word. Most important, that they live by it and be confident in its truth. Bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus through the gospel found only in the Bible, your written word. In Jesus' name, we praise you, Holy Father. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, now, we're going to open up with the uh, first slide we have is the books of the Bible. I don't know if we have any kids this morning. I don't hear any, but... Uh, we're going to pretend like we all are kids this morning again and learn the books of the Bible. Amen. Let's get started. Amen. Kids at heart. Yes. Amen. The books of the Bible, time tested and reliable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Genesis. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, the books of the Bible, their wisdom's verifiable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians 1 and 2, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd John, Jude and Revelation, the books of the Bible, time tested and reliable. Now you know all 66 books of the Bible. Amen. Now we know Amen. all 66 books of the Bible. Amen. 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 Okay, we're getting ready. I'm going to read the memory verse, because we really want to put emphasis on this scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man or the man or woman, mankind, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. It's underline the word work, because when we become a Christian, we're supposed to go out and do work of the Lord, the work that he has called you to do. Uh, you just don't sit down and say, okay, now that I am saved, I don't have to do anything. Well, that's just the opposite of what the word of God is for. When we learn the Bible, 
and we get his word embedded in us, then the Holy Spirit will uh, prompt us of the work that he wants you to do while we are here on planet Earth. And this scripture is very, very important. All scripture is breathed out by God And profitable for teaching For reproof, for correction And for training in righteousness That the man of God man again i want to put emphasis on that mean man woman boy girl young and old everybody has to go out and do the work of the lord when you become a born again believer in jesus and that you know and it's 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 really 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 important that you do some kind of work for the lord and that you know i can it's so important that we don't talk about it enough in the body of christ in that and that's why a lot of things is coming about because of lack of work of believers you know, in the world right now. And uh, the next one, the song is a, a song I put in. I didn't have one about uh, John 14. So this is about the kingdom of God. We are gonna be talking about the kingdom of God today uh, and the canon of the books, the books were written for the mm -hmm. kingdom and the kingdom meaning us, the body of Christ as a whole. And it's an uplifting song for the kids. And if they are not here today, I'm going to make sure I get it uh, downloaded. And it's a good song for them to memorize and to learn also. There's two kingdoms, but they're not the same. There's only one king who will never change. There's a kingdom of lies, fear and shame, and a kingdom of truth where Jesus reigns. Kingdom keepers make a sound. The king of kings, he has been crowned. To stand for truth, will stand this day. Cause Jesus is the there's two kingdoms, what will you choose? The Spirit of God is calling you to make a stand. 
stand for what is right in the armor of God, turning darkness to light. Kingdom keepers make a sound. The King of Kings, he has been crowned. Stand for truth, will stand this day. Cause Jesus is the only way. Stand strong in the battle for truth. Put a God, it won't be moved. Putting on the armor of God. This generation won't be lost. Kingdom keepers make a sound. The King of Kings, he has been crowned. Stand for truth, will stand this day. Cause Jesus is the Jesus is the only way. No other way to heaven except through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, we're getting started today in lesson seven. And the title of God's word is complete. All of God's written word is totally complete. You're not to add or take away from God's word. Old and New Testament, we can trust God's word. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit, written down by men, by eyewitnesses. God cannot lie. There's a lot of things God cannot do. He cannot lie. He cannot go back. He does not break his covenant. God is all true. Okay, the last time we were together, we talked about how the Old Testament canon came to us. Remember the word canon means the books of the Bible. If you were here, you will remember that Jesus used the Old Testament scriptures on the road to Emmaus with two of his disciples. And we showed a video of him walking and talking to his disciples. But today we would be discussing the New Testament. And then uh, uh, why do we call them testaments? They are called testament because a testament is a written record of a testimony. Now, I looked up another definition also of a testament. And it said uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, Merriam-Webster's dictionary, it said, it's a tangible proof of something, an expression or conviction, and it's also called a creed, an act by which a person determine the disposition of his or her property after death, when you will something to somebody also. You know, it's a covenant between God and the human race. I like that. It's a covenant between God and the human race. So the Old Testament is a collection of written words by God's prophet who recorded their testimonies. Jesus verified that they were true when he used them to teach during his ministry. Jesus was constantly quoting the Old Testament, especially Isaiah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. The New Testament is our record of the life of Jesus and his teachings. Let me read that again. The New Testament is our record of the life of Jesus and his teachings. It is a collection of writings, too. It was written by the testimony of the apostles, meaning they were eyewitnesses. They saw it. It was written by the testimony of the apostles and others. But now, do we know that what they wrote is true? Do we really believe it? And do we try to live by it 100% as believers? Well, the same truth about the inspiration of the text recorded by the Old Testament writers applies to the New Testament as well. 
the Holy Spirit moved the writers of the New Testament to write God's word. It was, that's why it was so important that Jesus would die on the cross and then on the third day he would rise again. And then he later on, he would go to heaven and be at the right hand of God. Jesus now is at the right hand of God. And that would made it possible for him to send the Holy Spirit down to live with each and every one of us. See, Jesus couldn't live in each and every one of us when he was here on planet Earth. But the way that when he died on the cross and then went to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit back in his place, the Holy Spirit can be with everyone, billions and billions of Christians all over the world at the same time. The Holy Spirit also moved the writers of the New Testament to write God's word, but we need to see how that worked by examining several packages, passages, packages of scripture. In this verse, Jesus is speaking to the disciples at the Last Supper in the upper room. Judas had already left, so we're not including Judas in this, the 11 disciples. These things they have spoken to you while I was still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Now, it's very important that you acknowledge uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the person that is working with us now. Jesus is at the right hand of God in heaven, praying for us, interceding for us, working for us. But the Holy Spirit dispensation is, if you want to call it that, is here now with us. He's with us every 24-7. He never leaves us as believers when we invite him to come into our life. But we have to invite him to come into our life in order for him to live within us. Let me read 26 again. This is the main scripture. I'm going to read both of you now. These things are spoken to you while I was still with you. And see, he's not with us now. Jesus is in heaven. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring your remembrance all that I have said to you. Would you like to come in on that, Pastor Yvonne? That is such a powerful scripture. It is powerful. Um, and it's important to know because the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. uh, the member of the Godhead that gives us the power to do the things that God has already inspired us to do. Um, he uh, brings things into remembrance. He gives us the power. And uh, he inspires us to go and to do the different things that um, that God wants done in the earth. So yes, Amen. very important. Yes, he's so, but he's so gentle. He don't. He won't force himself. He won't push himself on you. You have to do it voluntarily. When you love someone, you don't force yourself on them. They you just mutually love each other. You love him, and they love you. But with the Holy Spirit will not just beat you over the head and make you do something. He gives you free will, you know, and when you do something for someone and free because you want to, that's even more, uh, uh, well, it's, it's just better and all around in that sense. He's a gentle, the word of God says he's gentle and a gentle spirit. Okay, next, please. In John 14, 26, Jesus promised that the Father would send the Holy Spirit, also known as the what, to his disciples. Anybody remember? Anybody remember that, what he said? Just said it. Yes, we did. The helper. He, the Holy Spirit is also called the helper. He helps us in everything when we totally surrender to him. He's a, the, the third person of the Godhead, as Pastor Ivana had said there. He's got God the Father, 
God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father and God the Son now is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is here with us now on planet Earth and living in us. His temple is us. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Verse uh, 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 number two says, Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would help them to do what? Would help them to the things Jesus has said and done. Help them to do what? What do you have to do when you really want to work for the Lord? Y'all can answer. You, you can open your mic if you have the answer. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's right. I hope everybody got the mic open. <laughs> yeah, like so. Well, let's give them the answer. Okay. Remember. Okay. Now, sometimes uh, uh, we kind of forget what we're supposed to be doing in the body of Christ. But since the Holy Spirit lives in us, he will gently remind us what we are supposed to be doing in the body of Christ. Okay. Jesus, let me go back to that one. Let me read that. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would help them to remember the things Jesus had said and done. So when we remember the things that Jesus had said and done, then that also help us to be a better and effective worker for the Lord. I'm going to put a lot of emphasis in these last days on works, works, works. Works is like going out and sharing the word of God, helping your fellow person in the body of Christ, uh, loving everybody, doing all the things. In other words, you're not just say, I'm saved on. I'm just going to worry about my salvation. But you're going to put yourself last and you're going to go out and make sacrifices and work. You might say, I'm tired. Well, you're going to make a sacrifice and get up and do it anyway. That's where they call, that's where the word sacrifice come in. You know, make that sacrifice, get up and go and do it in that sense. Okay. Next one, please. Okay. Can we trust the Bible? We can trust the Bible 100%. And these are some of the reasons that we can trust the Bible. All scripture is, and we that's uh that was in the song there. I think all scripture is by God the Holy Spirit. All scripture is what breathe out by God. Uh say that again, please. Breathe out by God. Breathe out. Anyone else? Answer, please. Inspired or breathe out also inspired by God, the Holy Spirit. Same thing. Now, this is what we got to put a lot of emphasis on when we're talking about the Holy Trinity. We put a lot of emphasis on God, the Father. We put a lot of emphasis on Jesus. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, because of certain teachings and things that are in the body of Christ, that we don't put a lot of emphasis on the work of the Holy Spirit now here on planet Earth with us. And the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. And in the future, we're going to be really teaching heavily on the importance of the work of the Holy Spirit and his gifts that he gave us that we can operate in to help us in these last days, especially the gift of discernment that I'm constantly talking about. But it's, it's a very important that we put emphasis on the Holy Spirit as being the third person of the Godhead. It's all God. God is the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, is with us now. This is his time period now here on planet Earth. Amen. Yes. You had you to say? No. You had a comment, babe? No, I said amen. I said oh, okay. You're, okay. You're very good. So the main point of the passage is that the Holy Spirit was responsible for teaching and reminding the apostles of the truth. Now, sometimes when we happen to, uh, and even in joking and say something that is not true, 
uh, we get a little gentle nerd from the Holy Spirit. Saying, Was that really true? You know, the Holy Spirit is constantly with us. But in order for us to listen to him, we ought to be really walking in the spirit constantly. And he's constantly talking to us. But we, we have to make sure that we are in an attitude to hear. Pastor Yvonne did a message not too long ago about hearing the word of God and that. Well, that's hearing from the Holy Spirit because he's constantly nudging us and talking to us and keeping us on track, reminding us of the things that Jesus did while he was here on planet Earth and what Jesus told us that we are to do. Next, please. The disciples didn't exactly understand Jesus, but he was referring to his death when he had talked about uh, where he was getting ready to go. I don't know if we got a, a one on order, but I'll just give a definition of what he was talking about. Remember when Jesus said, I will go away, but I will send the helper, the Holy Spirit. He will help you in everything. So, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will be able to do everything that Jesus would do, but only on a grander scale because he could live with everyone. Come in on that, Pastor Yvonne. You had did some teaching on that. That was good. No, that, that's, that's great. He uh, In Acts chapter 1, he told uh, his disciples, uh, this is what I've been talking to you guys about. I'm getting ready to leave, but I'm not leaving you helpless. I will send the promise, the Holy Spirit, and he will remind you of all things. He will bring things into your remembrance. And uh, so, like you, you've been saying, we uh, the Holy Spirit is with us now. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will never leave us until the end of the age. <laughs> so Yes. Yes. I was, and that's why the, when you listen to a prophecy teacher or anyone who's teaching things that after the rapture, the presence of the Holy Spirit will be gone because the Holy Spirit lives within us. So all the believers will be raptured and gone. So the temple, in other words, is going uh, to heaven. So it won't be that Holy Spirit's presence here on earth the way it is now and believers in that. And like what like, when you walk, somebody I said last week, I hope I'm getting it right, say, when you walk into a building, the presence of the Holy Spirit is there. When you go to school, if you're a kid and you're saved, the presence of the Holy Spirit is in that school. You know, wherever you go, you are carrying the Holy Spirit with you. And that's why it's such a big attack on the church today. The enemy don't want that. So he's trying to drive the Holy Spirit out of places that he don't want in that sense, you know. Next, please. Oh, you're going to finish this one? Oh, okay. I didn't see you had changed that. <laughs> no, it's the same one. I was you didn't finish reading. It. Okay, I'm going to keep on. The disciples didn't exactly understand Jesus, but he was referring to his death. He wouldn't always be with them, but he, would leave, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't leave them alone. He would send the Holy Spirit. This means... I can remember, I will share this with you. Uh, at one point, a long time ago, when I first got saved, uh, a person that wrote a play and he asked us to be actors in the play. And that was uh, one of the things that I was supposed to do is uh, in the book of Acts. And I was supposed to stand and say, why do you stand there gazing? This same Jesus you saw taken away from you will come back again in the same manner. Remember that, Pastor Yvonne? Yes, I do. You yeah, did, you did your line very well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to the lesson. This means the Holy Spirit brought to remembrance the events they were writing about and taught them things they did not know. Oh, that's so important. Let me read that again. This means the Holy Spirit brought to remembrance the events they were writing about and taught them things they did not know. These words, these words were then recorded by the writers. That's why we got the Bible now. Those original writings are called autographs. Under divine direction, 
Under divine direction, Jesus' disciples and others recorded the inspired words revealed to them by God, the Holy Spirit. That is so important because we got a lot of scriptures now that uh, uh, a lot of written words, some of the Bibles, I don't want to get into a heavy, but some of the Bibles are kind of twisting some of the words around, especially when they, they try to make it uh, more feminine or less masculine and things of that sort, try to make angels look like uh, ladies, but in the, in the scriptures, Angels are always referred to as men. There never was a uh, little bitty cherub, a little bitty uh, girl looking angels the way they got them now. So we always stay with the word of God. Say never add or take away from anything that is in the Bible. Just stay with the word of God 100%. Don't let your imagination go around and say, this is what I would do, or this is what I think. What we think is not so important. They make a lot of movies now, and they say give them a, what do they call that when Hollywood said they got a right to do something? Do, I don't know. A right to change things, you know, uh, a writer's right to use his imagination to change things around. I can't think of it right now. But when it comes to the word of God, Nobody has a right to use their own. You stay right with the word of God. Don't Amen. add or don't take away. Some of the TV programs, some of the movies that they're making, everybody's bragging on. But some of the things that were in there is definitely not true. Some of the time we're going to prove to you that by showing you the movies and have you read the scriptures along with the movies or the TV programs. Okay, next. So what make these writings, which are describing historical, historical events, different from what uh, one of us would write? Excuse my typing. No, it's okay. Read that, read that again for me, Pastor Con. I was gonna. So what makes these writings, which are describing historical events, different from what one of us would write? Right. Now that's my point, and I want to at least stay right there. Well, that's the point I was trying to make. We don't throw out what we think that we the writer should have put in there. Okay. We stay with the word of God 100%. That was inspired by the Holy Spirit, not inspired by Pastor Sam or Pastor Yvonne, okay. but what the Holy Spirit wanted the writer that he had write the word of God down. We don't add, we don't take away. We live by the Bible and you can't go wrong in that sense. Always like, again, like if you bought a car with the manual of it and it say, fill this hole right here up with oil. And you say, well, I think I ought to pour water in there. You know, well, guess what? Your car is going to break down. So you don't add anything to that. You know, you stay right with the word of God 100%. Amen. Well, these authors recorded the events accurately because they were under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. These authors recorded the events accurately because they were under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Regardless of what Hollywood or television or any other person say, when they change it and say, we want it to look like this because we want more action in it or we want more of this, that's, they should be doing that. We stay with the word of God the way that it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. God oversaw the writing of these books. He made sure that they were as accurate recorded accurately record that could be passed on to the church in the future, to us. We have the word now. It was preserved, as we talked about in the other uh, lessons in that. The way that he wanted it preserved. Next, please. Okay, now, uh, when uh, uh, I kind of added this one to the lesson. Uh, uh, the, the writers gave me permission to do so. 
but when we are walking in the Holy Spirit, and then uh, we people will know that we are walking in the Holy Spirit by uh, something that this song is going to talk about. Play this song, please.
man, agape love, agape love, love, love. All the things, all the scriptures don't mean anything unless you're walking in love. And if the Holy Spirit is living in you, when you walk into a place, people will know you are a believer by the love that you will exemplify, that they will see in your countenance, they will see in your face by your love. We don't let, we want, I don't care who you are. If you notice that all the group that had old people, young people, uh, 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 everyone there was that we will know that they are Christian by the love that they would exemplify. Without love, you're not getting anything done in the body of Christ. I'm talking agape love. Amen. Amen. Any other comment? Did anybody see anything on that song that would make you want to have a comment about it? If not, we we'll go to the next one. John 21, 24, 25. This is the disciples who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things. We know that his testimony is true. Now, there are also many other things that Jesus did. Uh, were, very, uh, were every one of them to be written, if, if all the things that Jesus did, if it, if it was to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. In other words, everything that Jesus done was so much the whole world would be space in the whole world to stack all the books up for what he did, the great things that he did through love because of perfect love, agape love. God love us so much. He loved his creation. He's doing everything that he can do to get each and every one of us saved and set free and follow him and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Next, please. John wanted us to understand something about what he had written. Let's look at verse 24 again. What is, what is it John want us to understand? Read that for me, Pastor Yvonne. Okay, verse uh, 24. This is the disciple who is bearing witness <clears throat> about these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. true. Amen. This is, okay. John was, uh, this is the disciple who is bearing witnesses about these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. In other words, we ought to read and live by every word that is written in the Bible. When we read the Ten Commandments, when they say, thou shalt not, we ought to live by those Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. When we read the New Testament and we go to Galatians, uh, and it's telling us how we are to live. It said, do not steal, do not do all of these things, do not uh, love your uh, enemy, turn your other cheek, we ought to live by those things. We have to do that. Okay, next, please. Okay. I just wanted to uh, also point out that uh, John is uh, one of Jesus's, or he was Jesus's closest disciple. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a, a very special love for Jesus. And uh, it, it comes through in his writings, in mm -hmm. his books. And um, that if you want to get close to Jesus, read the book of John, Amen. Uh, because Amen. he just pulls you into the picture, into the life that they share together as disciples and being a follower of Jesus Christ. So mm. I just wanted to point mm. that out. Well, that's what that's one of the reasons I wanted to put that one video with the know your Christians by your love. John was a disciple of love, as they call it. He is certain he was Jesus saw the love just naturally that was in him so much until at one point he said, I think he left his mom with John. Okay, mom, I'm going to heaven. You stay with John there because he's a loving person. Yeah. Amen. John was saying that he was a disciple of Jesus, that he wrote these things about Jesus and that everything he wrote is true. 
John was an eyewitness and lived with Jesus. And what does John 21, 25 tell us about all things that Jesus did? Read that. I'm going to have you read the blue for me. Pastor. Now there, okay, now there are also many other things that Jesus did and were every one of them to be written. I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now, this tells us that John only wrote a small portion of what Jesus did. In, in fact, I think that's supposed to be, in fact, John said that the world itself couldn't contain the number of books it would take uh, to record everything that Jesus did. I mean, he did so many things. Uh, I mean, when Jesus, we don't, boy, if we could imagine all the things, well, Jesus was God in the flesh. We put it that way, and that'll give you a good understanding. Now, what we're going to do, I know we had said 34, but I think we're going to end there, Pastor Ron. I'm looking at the clock. Okay. And uh, and, I, and I also want to apologize. I do so much uh, uh, typing, getting ready for everything that we do on, on our lessons during the week and on Sunday. And uh, I, I apologize for the typos on Pastor Sam. No, that's good. That's okay. I can, no. think, I can basically kind of. Yeah, uh, but I, I should have yes, uh, So I apologize. Well, thank you, Frida. I love you. Okay, now we're going to end there. And if, any questions or comments or tell me where am I wrong? You have a right to be wrong if you want to. Okay, in recording, Fessy Hunt.